News for Women. Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is March 31st, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. This Saturday, April 2nd, the Feisty News presents the Feisty Life Skills Training for Women. The free monthly live training class happens every first Saturday of the month with a different life skill topic aimed to teach women how to handle life's most tricky circumstances. Last month, we discussed how the pandemic impacted the mental health of women. And this Saturday, we will discuss radical self-care for women. We have a panel of women who are open enough to share the one thing they had to do to demonstrate self-love. What did you have to do to prove to yourself that you love you over everything else? Attend this month's life skills training class by subscribing to the feistynews.com. The link to the private Zoom event will be sent out to all subscribers on Friday evening. All women and interested men are invited to attend. Don't miss out on interacting with me and our panel of amazing women who will share their wisdom so that you can become stronger, wiser, better. In other news, what happened this week? Well, we know the slap heard around the world dominated the internet and all news headlines for 48 hours after the 94th annual Oscars this past weekend. The sad thing is the debacle overshadowed a night of wins for women. For the first time in Oscars history, three women hosted the Oscars together. Comedians Regina Hall, Wanda Sykes, and Amy Schumer brought their raw comedy to the Oscars. Ariana DuBose won the Best Supporting Actress Award for her role as Anita in West Side Story, making her the first openly queer woman of color to win an Academy Award for acting. The Best Short Documentary Subject Award went to The Queen of Basketball, a film about Lucia Harris, the first and only woman to be drafted to the NBA. Jane Campion became the third woman in history to win a Best Director Award for The Power of the Dog and Sean Hader, a mom, directed and wrote the independent film Coda, which chronicled the lives of two deaf parents and their hearing daughter. Coda won several awards, including Best Film. Congratulations, ladies. I honor you for representing greatness in Hollywood film. In other news, women around the country celebrated as Vice President Kamala Harris became the first woman to hold the vice presidency in US history yet. We all shook our heads in disbelief at the U.S. Supreme Court nomination hazing of Judge Katanji Brown last week. We're still hopeful, though. The number of Black women in positions of public leadership seem to be rising, and activists like April Rain want to be first in line to help with the ascension. April practiced law for over 15 years, but her life took an unexpected turn when the lack of people of color in the 2015 Oscars nominations compelled her to tweet a now-famous hashtag, Oscars so white. April is also part of the funding cohort for She Will Rise, a grassroots campaign to support the nomination and confirmation of the first Black woman to the U.S. Supreme Court. Very excited to have April on the Feisty today to introduce the concept of racial equity. Welcome to the Feisty, April. Please help our audience to understand the fundamentals of your work with promoting racial equity and why it's so important for our society to see Black women in leadership. Thank you so much for having me today on The Feisty. Uh, representation matters. It, it's, it's simple. <laughs> and and, and um, what we know is that for young people, you cannot be what you cannot see. And so not just with respect to the entertainment industry, um, but in politics, in the judiciary, in education, in tech, in every single industry throughout the country, it's important that those people who are being represented feel that they can see themselves um, and that their issues, their concerns are being addressed by someone who has similar lived experiences.
Previously, I was a lawyer and I practiced for um, almost 20 years. And so having uh, black woman lawyers, uh, I think of Barbara Jordan and I think of Anita Hill and so many others told me as I was going through law school um, that I could accomplish that. That's why it's important that we have a black and South Asian woman as the vice president in uh, Kamala Harris now. That's why it's important that we support Judge Katanji G. Brown Jackson, who is the nominee for the Supreme Court who, and will be replacing Justice Breyer, who is retiring. So I think everyone can see someone in their community even, um, you know, that inspires them to do something similar. Thank you, April. Perfectly clear why we need to see more Black women being represented in leadership. But as I previously reported in another segment, being a female leader comes with so many disadvantages, one of which is the public's propensity to attack female leaders with violence and online bullying. While we do want to promote the leadership of women, help us to understand some of the pitfalls women in leadership face and how we can overcome these obstacles. Well, of course, <laughs> there are always issues um, where you're going to be first or one of a few. And, and I'm sure that your listeners um, and, and uh, audience know all about that. You know, that, so um, there, there are issues of racism. There are issues of sexism. Um, you know, depending on how someone identifies, there could be issues about homophobia. Um, and, and there's a term uh, coined by uh, Moya Bailey uh, called misogynoir, which is the intersection of racism and sexism. And so many people, including, for example, Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson, the Supreme Court nominee, have experienced that. We saw that uh, recently during the confirmation hearings when uh, certain senators were saying things like, well, she is the affirmative action pick, uh, when we know that the biggest uh, benefactor of affirmative action in the United States is actually white women, not black women. And yet no one mentioned affirmative action when now Justice Amy Coney Barrett was going through her confirmation hearing. Um, so especially, I, I'm sure that your audience, you know, all of the women who are, who are listening and watching right now, I'm sure that they have uh, opportunities, uh, experiences in their past in which they feel that they uh, were not heard, were not seen, were not respected um, at their workplace. And so when we talk about the Supreme Court, this is the same thing, but on a much grander level because the cameras are on and the entire world can see what's going on. A, a lot of it is based on confidence. You have to know that you are um, someone who can handle this opportunity. And of course you are, because you have handled much more uh, in your lived experience. So what's incredibly important is to ensure that you have a support system, uh, you know, whether that is a partner or community members or friends that you can lean on, uh, because we definitely shouldn't be walking through this world alone. Uh, and, and then find mentors, find sponsors, find people who will listen you up even when you're not in the room, who will make it easier for you to tackle that next challenge. Excellent advice, April. Thank you very much. As an advocate for Black women in leadership, we salute you for taking a stand to help propel women who are capable of leading into the careers they desire. That is leadership in itself. We appreciate your leadership, April Rain. In other news, Adults diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder continue to struggle with unemployment or underemployment issues at an extremely high rate. Studies estimate a staggering 50 to 75% of the 5.6 million autistic adults in the US are affected. Nearly 50% of 25 year olds with autism have never held a paying job despite having the skill sets to work. Autism greatly varies from person to person with no two people with autism sharing the exact same traits. The effects of autism overlap between all ethnic and socioeconomic groups, yet minority groups tend to receive incorrect or late diagnosis, likely causing depression, ostracism from neurotypicals, and abandonment of goals and dreams. What can we do to help? Well, Autism Speaks recently launched its workplace inclusion program. Its purpose is to equip job seekers with autism with tools and resources to empower them in employment and leadership opportunities. What can you do if you're not a huge organization with a million person reach yet? You want to make a difference. 
If you're an entrepreneur, you can express your compassion and leadership by creating jobs for people with autism within your own company, like Jennifer Wise. Jennifer is the founder and CEO of Be Free Gluten Bakery. She said she never thought about being an entrepreneur, but after her son was diagnosed with autism, she found herself on a new path. Jennifer has also created multiple positions within our health food company so that people with autism can work. Welcome to the feisty, Jennifer. Look at you, showing this world what true feminine leadership is all about. Tell us about what inspired you to create jobs for people with autism. Uh, well, T. Erica, first of all, thank you so much for having me on the feisty news. I'm, I'm super happy to be here. So what inspired us and what led us to move forward with the initiative to create jobs is our oldest son is on the autism spectrum and we've seen firsthand the challenges uh, for him and for many others like him of getting work and keeping work and, and not only just work, but doing something that they're passionate about. We all have dreams and hopes and visions for our lives. And, um, so it just, it's, it's been a big challenge. And so that spurred us to make a change and do something about it. So what we did is we've created jobs. We've created opportunities for people with autism to have meaningful work. So we actually have uh, created a product that we're starting to make. And um, we have employees uh, that are on the autism spectrum and with other dis disabilities as well. And uh, we created this product that um, is really just a great um, product that makes it super easy and convenient to um, provide jobs, um, a lot of variety of different jobs based on abilities. That is amazing, Jennifer. Please explain to our viewers why it's important for employers to meet the needs of our society by taking action to create jobs for people with autism and how they can create jobs within their current framework. Those are fantastic questions. So the first is inclusion. We need to be inclusive and um, you know, people of all abilities have dreams and hopes for their, for their life. And so um, if uh, we feel like um, if, if you are a business owner, um, it's kind of your responsibility and your duty to reach out to your community and be able to provide jobs for people. There are many, many positions of all different levels of skills um, that are needed in, in our facility. And so we match, um, uh, we, we match the interest of the employee um, and their job abilities with jobs that are available. So sometimes they need just a little bit of modification, you know, right? They might need, um, you know, just a few extra steps in order to support their work in that position. And, and we're willing and able to do that. And so uh, one of those examples is we have um, a sampling program where our workers um, put little bite-sized pieces of our warrior mix into a package and then apply it to a card. And it's kind of a three-step process. So three employees work on that each individual having a very specific job. One person puts the product in the bag, the next person seals it, the next person staples it to a card. So that's a very detailed example of one of the jobs that we have. Um, and it is, um, you know, there's an 80% of unemployment within the autism community. And um, this community deserves a chance. And, um, you know, typically this um, autism community, they're, re they're really desiring a reason to get up in the morning, just like everyone else. They want a reason, they want a place to belong, and they want a paycheck. And so for those reasons, um, they're, you know, also they're very reliable, um, hardworking, rule followers, and, you know, probably the most dedicated employees you'll find out there. Yes, this is what female leadership is all about. When a woman sees a need in our society, she doesn't reach out to complain that someone else should do it. She creates a plan and leads its execution herself. Thank you for your feminine leadership, Jennifer. Time for a break. What does society expect women to do that is actually a choice? Should a man pay his wife $50,000 to have his child? Stay tuned. Juicy details of these stories and more right after the break. Hi, Jazz here from JD Bathco. 
My mission started with the creation of a vagina-friendly bath soak by my, F, my love letter to women, but it didn't stop there. JD Bath Co. now has an entire line of clean beauty products made for sensitive skin. From our handmade soaps to our skin conditioning and clearing oils to our best-selling organic rose oil or one of our many organic vegan cruelty-free body creams or the newly added line of body scrubs. JD Beth Co. is located in the heart of Atlanta, Georgia, and we would love to have you shop with us. Come check us out at www.jdbathco.com. Look forward to seeing you. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the Feisty News for Women. Girl, guess what? Do you remember when you were a little girl and your mother handed you your first doll baby? How did you feel when you went to play house? Was it something that came naturally? Did you just focus on doing her hair or did you make her fight all the boy dolls? <laughs> As women, we are socially conditioned to believe that becoming a mother is an expected life milestone when reproduction is one of the many choices we can make for our lives. For those of us with children, we can't imagine our lives without them yet. There are some women who live their lives like it's golden and swear they will never follow the prescription for women. The Feisty Life series introduces women who make choices that go against the standard expectations for women in our society. You're gonna love meeting Courtney. Courtney is living the feisty life. Go ahead and tell us why. Hi, I'm Courtney and I live a child-free lifestyle. People react to me being child-free in, in a lot of different ways. Uh, a lot of the time they don't know what to say or they think that it's a fad or a moment or something that's not going to last a lifetime um, they believe that i'll change my mind one day uh, and and quite simply i won't <laughs> i'm very happy living child free with my husband um, you know i get a lot of a lot of negative feedback and a lot of doubt what if you get divorced what are you going to do when you're older who's going to take care of you um, how are you going to find fulfillment in life? You know, you won't know what real love is until you love a child. And, and those things just simply aren't true. You can live a fulfilling child free lifestyle um, and, and not be scared of it and not be scared of what's going to happen when you're older or if your marriage breaks down or if life changes because Life isn't about living for what's going to happen in 30 years. It's about for living right now with what makes you happy and what makes you fulfilled in this moment. I always knew that I didn't want to have children ever since I was a teenager. And I was lucky enough to meet my life partner who felt the same way. Um, it's not that I don't have maternal instincts. You know, I love to take care of my friends and my family and my pets. Uh, and I have a really big heart and I'm very an empathetic person. But just having children was never something that I wanted to do. It was never something in my soul that felt right. I felt that I needed to do other things with my life and with my partner. I fill my lifestyle with so many great things. I travel, we go on trips several times a year before COVID was a thing, but we're still planning for some amazing trips in the coming years. I spend time really getting to know myself. What makes me happy? What do I enjoy doing? Meditating, doing yoga, and really just getting in touch with my soul and my purpose for being here. I feel my life getting to know my husband and my partner and, and what makes him tick and what makes him happy and how to communicate better and be a good partner to him so we can enjoy our life together. Um, I spend time in nature going hiking and uh, just being outside and soaking that in and all the wonders that come with it. 
um, and, and mostly spending a lot of time with my friends and with my family and just enjoying their company and being with them. To, to define yourself without children is not something that women are taught. It's not something that you see in society. It's not something that you see on TV or even really read about in books. Being, being child free and knowing who, who you are as a woman is not something that you're taught. And I find that I identify with who I am based on my values and based on what I do and how I conduct myself on a daily basis rather than having a child. If I can live my life in line with my values, which is being loyal and being trustworthy and being open and being excited about life, then if I can live those values, then at the end of the day, I feel that I can identify with those things over being a mother, which is just as special and just as important. I, I write Dink Life blog, which really came from my, my love of my child-free lifestyle and wanting to share with other people who live that same lifestyle. So you can, you can follow me on Instagram um, or come check out the blog at dinklifeblog.com to learn more about being child-free and, and to share your thoughts um, and comments on different topics about being child-free or being in a dink. Thanks so much, Courtney, for helping us to understand exactly why some women choose to be childless by choice. We respect you and we salute you. In other news, in this week's viral dilemma, we're focused on a question sent in by a man on Reddit. The Reddit user explained that although he and his wife aren't legally married, they are seen as such by common law due to their housing situation and length of time they've been together. The man continued to explain how he and his wife are on the high earning spectrum, earning more than $175,000 per year after tax. The social media user then explained how they wanted to spend the beginning of their marriage traveling, but were unable to do so due to the pandemic and lockdown. They then decided it might be a good time to have kids instead of continuously waiting for better or safer travel, tra travel conditions. Without too serious of a discussion about it, they decided to stop using birth control and let things happen. Before they could even take a practice pregnancy test, his wife handed him a 16 page binder with a written contract that not only outlined the expenses of having a baby like childcare, but the expected division of labor between the two of them, with his wife explaining that while her workplace does allow a full year of maternity leave, it's only paid for up to six months at 50% of wages, with the last six months being unpaid. The pair discussed the financial side of her workplace maternity leave with the man adding his wife was very direct about wanting to be compensated for the $50,000 that she would lose during her six months in growing and caring for their child. He wrote, she's asking me to compensate her for that $50,000. In addition to agreeing to a split any related but unexpected costs to pregnancy and childbirth. The man continued to explain how he's struggling to wrap his head around his wife's monetary requests and that it was a lot to demand in spite of their weighty salaries. The gentleman asked for advice from the internet and his dilemma went viral. Commenters were stunned and impressed, describing the man's wife as legendary and sharing that she is absolutely correct. Men commented that he should run because no man should pay a monetary price for wifely duties. And what do I think? Well, the most important factor in this story is not about what she wants, it's about the fact that she knows what she wants and expressed it directly to him. Outside of being abusive, there is no right or wrong way to be in a relationship. You could be a submissive woman, you could be a dominant woman, or you could be neutral and swing both ways as the situation sees fit. As a relationship coach for the past six years, I've seen that one of the major factors in the breakdown of many relationships stems from resentment from unexpressed desires. Someone in the relationship wants a specific type of exchange from their partner and they become angry when it doesn't happen, but they never expressed it. You have to figure out what you need, then you have to speak up about what you need and then give your partner time to deliver. In this case, the woman used amazing communication skills in writing to share what she needs to feel like an equal partner in the relationship. He can only review her needs and decide if their love is worth agreeing to her request. Everyone had a choice choose to agree or disagree, but not being explicit in what you need from your partner puts you at fault when they don't deliver. They're not just supposed to know, tell them. 
Write it down if you have to. Your needs matter. Yes, they do. Then you'll get to see how much they value you and you can decide what to do from there. Thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the Feisty. 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 Welcome to the Feisty. 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 Welcome to the Feisty. Mm.